Too? Yeah, yeah, good. We live, we live, we live. Hold on, my, my, I had got like a bad cough. Um, uh, <coughs> let me put my phone in. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. New week, new episode. You're now listening to the Tony Central podcast. Uh huh. It be your host, Famine. Yeah. And Mellow. Cloudy. And today, our special guest is Fury. Yeah. What up, what up, what up? And GP. Yo, yeah. what's up? Thanks for having us, man. Well, well, we appreciate you guys taking the time to be part of this episode. Word up, word up. Season 2, episode 37. 37. Wow. We getting there, we getting there. Um, Before we start, letting people know you can catch us on iTunes, Google Play Music, uh-huh. TuneIn, Podbay, uh-huh. Order Boom, SoundCloud, uh-huh. uh, YouTube. Yeah. Um, TonyCentralPodcast.com uh-huh. TonyCentralPodcast at gmail.com yeah. Send your music We so everywhere be Played on the playlist by DJ Kenny Maneuver Yeah, yeah And uh, yo, follow us on Instagram too Tony yeah. Central Podcast. Definitely Word And um, how you doing, Melo? You good? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good I'm feeling real cloudy today Feeling real good We here with some, with some, with some legends Word Um is it me or do you feel like when it comes to the rap scene or music artist scene in Jersey City, Fury is one of the names yeah, you always hear? Definitely. Off top. Like definitely his name is up there when you say he's you you mentioned the Albi Owls, then you have the CFs, and then you hear Furies and right, right. I definitely. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. What's crazy, I heard of Fury before Albi Owl C F. Ah uh, yeah, I, I I heard of him before I'll be out. CF, yeah. I grew up with CF, so yeah. Oh, that's a cheat code. Yeah, yeah, that's a cheat yeah. code. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. crazy thing is, um, coming up, me and I'll be out. You know, we performed at the same uh, at the same showcases and everything. Um, yeah. My man, shout out my man Shampoo. You know what I mean? He used to always call me when he did showcases or whatever in New York. And um, yeah, we came up doing the same, you know, showcases. Yeah. He always had he always had his whole PJs behind him. That was the good yeah. thing, you know what I mean? Was it maybe a a, a a confusing maybe because he got locked up and he was away and, and you stood around more and then he came home? That was like yo. It's the crazy thing is um we was doing time pretty much in the same place too. When I went, you know, I got sentenced to uh, five years, eighty five percent. When I went down, he was in the same jail. He had just went to the camps and I just got on the main compound. So I was, I was, you know, I was doing the battles every Friday, going to the yard, you know what I mean? And uh, I always would hear about, yo, your man Albie Al is, uh, he's in the camps and he was killing shit too. I was like, oh, I, I heard of him, but I had never met him, you know okay. what I'm saying? Until I finally like came home and, you know, his whole situation, you know, blew over and everything. But that was like more recent that I met him like on a one on one. Okay. So you, you would say, um, can you hear me? Yeah. I feel like my mic cut off. Nah, you good? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, don't know, I can't hear myself. But yeah, I appreciate the, you know, the accolades. That's definitely dope, you know, to hear somebody else say it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I appreciate that, man. So for those that don't know who Fury is, where where Fury is from? I mean, of course, Jersey City, but... Originally, you know, I'm from... Uh, I, I was born in Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? I stayed in Brooklyn until I was about six. And um, then I moved to, uh, you know, Jersey City, Baldwin Ave. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Baldwin Ave, I stayed I stayed there, you know, I started hustling, you know, like 14 years old, you know, I stayed out there and I it started off like freestyling. I, I used to just get drunk with the fellas and um, sometimes cut class or whatever and just freestyle with the Sony Beats, just, you know what I mean? One, we have two, we, we have two Sony Beats together, one recording and one playing the instrumental and we just, we used to just go off for hours. The yellow mean? one? Another one. <laughs> I love that. Just crazy. everyone, yeah. like, yo, we was running through them. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that was a classic one. And uh, uh, yeah. it, it just it just became a regular thing for us to just link up. And everybody, whether you know how to freestyle or not, we was just going in. You know what I'm saying? Word. And uh, now, so, before you started doing music, was was there any movement in Jersey City as far as artists? I know, of course, Joe Buttons, but before him, 
Yeah, uh, not really. You know, like there's, you know, there's legends out there. I'm told. Uh, let me not, you know, forget to mention the Heat. The Heat, uh, Montgomery Project. They, they had, they had shit popping out there since before I started. You know what I'm saying? So when Screw came home from doing his stretch, you know, he he saw the Heat and he was like, oh, we gotta bring them on board. You know what I'm saying? So they definitely pillars in that Jersey City, you know, rap mm-hmm. movement. Like they was. Yeah three of the best like a three-man team they one of the best okay and now for both of you guys fury first what inspired you to get into hip-hop i just you know i i'm glad to have come up in an era where artistry meant something you know what i'm saying yeah. and uh you know the nas is the krs one and you know, they, this, they made music with a message, you know what I'm saying? Word. Slick Rick and, uh, you know, just learning how to finesse rhymes like a, like a cool G rap and, and just piece these 16s together that, you know, you you put so much emphasis on, a, you know, me, I like to come in, my, my you know, the start of my verse has to always be flawless and the end got to always be flawless, you know yeah. what I'm saying? For me, that's the most important part. Yeah, hell yeah. You know what I mean? What about you, GP? What got you into music? What, what basically got me into making beats is because I was born with a failed corny. So growing up, I couldn't do no what, sports. What's a failed corny? What's, what is the that? Failed, cor- failed corny is basically like the pupil of your eye. So I'm, yeah. I'm blind out of one eye. Okay. So that's since birth? In the birth. It's oh. a birth defect. So oh. growing up in, in school, I couldn't do no sports. Okay. And if I did sports, I was either benched or I wasn't given a chance to play. Word. So I lost motivation in that. So, but when I was growing up, I was listening to Jada Kiss and all that. Yeah. And I was also like, me making beats, I feel like it happened by accident because I went to my um, godfather's house and we was just coming back from a late. And I leaned up against, um, I didn't know it was a drum pad at the time. I leaned up against it and I heard the snare. Okay. And I was like, I clicked it again. And I was like, oh, that shit, that shit is hot. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so then, so then I started learning the, the pads, and then he was like, like my godfather, has, he's been the biggest motivation Word. for my beats, because he's, he started, he's my OG. Okay. Like, like, so he's a producer? Yeah, my, my godfather, he, yeah, he produced beats, but he's more like a, of an R&B producer. Okay. But he, he showed me, he showed me how to, <laughs> um, like to listen, like, because when I was growing up, I was just listening to whatever was being played on the radio. So he showed me the Capones, the Noriegas, like. Okay. So I started going outside and I started looking up all these guys, and then that's when I started listening to more of, um, more of Bigs, yeah. more more Biggie songs. Yeah. Then like everybody, like when I was growing up, everybody was just listening to like Juicy, Hypnotize, all the all the hyped up Biggie songs. Yeah. But then yeah, I st- then he came across Fury's music. <laughs> 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 Not but but what I can you, say. What year you were born? I was born in '97. Oh wow. shit! Yeah, I Wait, was joking old? about that earlier. <laughs> yeah, I was joking. I was joking about that. He really was born in ninety. Yo, he was born in the year Wu Tang Forever came out, bro. Yeah, wow. I was in seventh grade, bro. Yo, I think I lost my virginity in ninety seven. <laughs> <laughs> Real shit. I was thirteen. Damn, he was born in ninety seven. So, shit. Listen, I, I had conversation with, with kids born in 90, 92. 93, I think you yeah. beat the wreck of 97. Yeah. Because wow. when it comes to being born in 97, like, to try to adapt to Biggie and Pac and stuff Pac like that. Pac was already gone. They was already gone. Yeah, they yeah, were gone. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, that's crazy. But it, it was more or less because I grew up in Brooklyn, so it was just the New York sound that I was listening to. Oh, he grew up. I was, I was, right? Yeah, so what I grew part up. part of Brooklyn? Uh, um, Southside, Williamsburg. Okay. All right. Southside. So, so when I when I was growing up, I was like, I was like a Biggie fan, and then and then Big L, Big yeah. L came into play, Big Pun, and then of course I started listening to Joel Ortiz because he was from Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. He was from from Cooper. And yeah, and that and that connects with <coughs> with you because Fact. I think one of the first videos that I might have. Jersey Maybe City yeah, anthem, it was yeah. the Jersey City anthem. He, he, he made his guest appearance. Yeah, yeah, up. and that's when I knew the connection between Block Royal, and that's when I started to learn about all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. When that anthem came out, the funny, the funny thing is with that anthem, that's when I first heard of Fury. Like when I first heard the anthem, I was still young. That came out in in '09. Wait, 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 let me cut you off. You're still young. 
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was still young. <clears throat> Super. So when that anthem came out, when that when the Jersey City anthem came out, I was playing it in the living room, and my dad's from from Franklin. Okay. So he saw me watching the video, and you know he he knows Fury from back in the day. So he was like, "Yo, that's that's my boy." And so then I was like, "Oh, that shit's hot." So then I started typing the the name Spitfire, and then like more more stuff came up, and then I I like. Like at first, like I respected it. Yeah. Like, cause, it, cause, like, when I was growing up, he sounded like, like I'm not, not, not to disrespect, but like he sounded like what I was, like what I'm accustomed to listening to, like the the lyricists and all that, and that's why I, I fucked with it. Yeah. Well, well, the song that got me more, like, more in tune was "Loneliest Number." Okay. Cause I never heard nothing like that before. Everything else was just like, like gritty, gritty stuff, and "Loneliest Number" is more like of a laid back. You could you could listen. It's like a it's like a hip hop, yeah. like party song. Like it, like it has a vibe. It, it, it brings a, it brings a like a chill vibe to it that everybody could vibe out to it. Yeah, but why, why, why you said like yeah. no disrespect? Not because because usually some artists like when when you be like oh yo you Try remind to put you, them in a box you know what I'm saying like, oh, okay. yeah like like say if like you remind like if you tell like like one of your friends like he's not my friend he's like more like a, my brother because yeah. he's another reason why I keep doing my beats yeah because it went from because it went from. It went from listening to his music now that I, I produce for him. Yeah. So that's right. why I find I find it dope. <laughs> Wait, hold up, hold up. Before you fast forward. No, but right one thing yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. Not for nothing. I mean, for you saying no disrespect, you you sound like the music that yeah, no, from the old times. That's the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. You, you're giving him props what I even mean to you. That's the essence, man. Cause usually usually when I when I say that, a lot of Artists that I've talked to, they feel like they being disrespected or how though? Because like, you're comparing, them, yeah, like, like yeah, yeah, like you compare, like you comparing them, saying like if they don't sound unique, like if they don't stand out, like like they saying like if they trying to catch their own buzz <laughs> off of that artist, yeah, when, yeah. When I, but it's like it's like I don't mean it in no no type nah, of disrespect. Yeah. I mean, when it comes right. to music, there's always gonna be that one thing that you be like, you remind me of this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no doubt, but it's like when I when when I have said that in the past, yeah, people have like gave me more of a sour face when I really didn't mean, yeah, no yeah. no like pun intended behind it. It was just like, well, yo, you know what? You're in the industry of hip hop. There's always gonna be like, <laughs> gonna be like always, that, there's always gonna be people that are gonna right. be happy, and there's gonna some people you they're gonna feel offended, just, and you're like, just, it, it, it don't got nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, word. Right. Yeah. Now I was gonna ask. Because we're talking about <clears throat> how you got into it and what inspired you to get into it. What would be the first artist that you can remember that you listened to and you was like, I want to do this? I'm going to say Jadakiss. Jadakiss was that. And who J- was it for you? It's crazy. That like um, like I said, Cool G Rap. Like as far as the way he puts his 16s together, it's like no, no filler, just straight. Now, but Cool G Rap, you're saying Cool yeah. G. Now, were you being raised in that era with Cool yeah. G Rap? Yeah. Like when Cool G I, Rap was hot? I was, was born high? in 84. So. Oh, okay. And, so you. You know, yeah. So I, I I was able. Yo, my brother was such a music. Like he was he was off the hip hop crazy. Like he yeah. has stacks and stacks of records, vinyls, and CDs for days. Like he used to always put me as a youngin to listen to hip hop. Oh, that's so, dope. I went through all so many people's albums just listening, just soaking it all up. And from, you know, back in the days, you couldn't get lyrics. Yeah. So you had to write it on the paper, you know wow. what I'm saying? So I used to write, I used to write my favorite songs down, all the lyrics, and perform it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's crazy. So that's how I learned how to piece a 16, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, I used to just write it line for line. So I was like, all right, this is how I'm going to do it. And it just clicked. It, it was natural, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't forced or nothing. It was just something I, I like to do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, word. Now, so you got into the music and you started, you know what I mean, put formulating the flow and right. all of that, putting everything together. Now, do you remember the first time you stepped into a studio? Yeah, it's crazy thing you asked that because my first ever song was recorded uh, downstairs in this in, in this, this building, building? In this building, yeah. What? Yeah, I was I was like 14 going on 15 years old. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you and you and you and this remember is around, uh, this around like 98. <laughs> like so you were one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was one. And you was recording your first Yeah, joint. I was recording my first song. Who who yeah. was it with? 
Shout out my brother Crook. Um, we started Block Royal. Me, uh, Crook, KI, and The Heat. We was the first signees. We was the first people to sign to Block Royal when okay. it started. And um, Crook was the first one that I really, like, you know, I, I looked up to him because he was like a <laughs> dope artist. Like, he, yeah. his delivery, his flow was crazy. So he took me under the wing and we just started, I recorded my first song with him. And after that, everything took off. Like, he's the one that named me Franchise. Like, he used to always call me Franchise, the young and like, you gonna be the Franchise. Like, That's oh. dope. Yeah. And, and, I, and for you, I know this is, <laughs> cause you're so young. Do you remember your first experience with getting in the studio and all of that? The, the crazy part is the first time I ever stepped inside the studio was like, I'm gonna say three years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago, like, like growing up, Kip, like I have friends that had minor setups in their house, and we call it the studio, but yeah. it's technically their bedroom. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Where I mean, shit. Ain't yo, shit. sometimes that's the best studio. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where the classic records come from. Come from there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah where the growth. For, how long were you making beats before you stepped in the studio? I was, I would say about when, when Drop like the. House. Right. I was I was making beats before, but I was just making them to keep for myself. I was like about twelve. To keep for yourself for what? You yeah, was rapping? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. Like, <laughs> I didn't know what he wanted to do yet. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna okay. say I'm gonna say like I'm gonna say I, I didn't know what what I was doing. Okay. And I didn't want to send beats out. And, like they, I'm not gonna lie, they were garbage. The, the beats that I made, like yeah. it, it start. That's how everybody starts. Like yeah, you, you gotta start, grow. Yeah. It's about growth. And so then, I pretty much like. My ear started to develop more. Okay. My ear started to develop more, and I started liking more like sixty samples, seventy samples, like the yeah, the jazz. The j- I love I love jazz samples. They I love it They too, make man. the they make the best hip hop records. Yeah, definitely. And well, how old are you when you're doing this? I'm gonna say like around twelve, cause when when I was when I was twelve, I was doing everything from scratch, but I didn't know none of the keys. I didn't I didn't know notes. I didn't know notes at the time. I was just doing it because. Like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't play no sports, so I needed a hobby. Yeah. And so, beats became a hobby. Okay. And That's then, what's up. And then from the hobby, it came into a passion. Yeah. And so, like, my parents didn't know, my parents didn't know about <laughs> it, cause I was just going to my godfather's house to make beats. They didn't know I was making beats at oh, his house. Oh, they thought you was just going to they, church they, your godfather. Yeah, they thought I was. <laughs> nah, I was going over there to learn yeah, like, how to make word. beats. That's what's and, up. Yeah. And now, so we, so you. In there, you do your first song. Mm-hmm. Now, how long after you do your first song, you start thinking like, oh, I'm gonna start doing, I'm gonna put together a project? Um, immediately, my man Wiz, uh, he's like a real close friend of Screws, rest in peace. Uh, Wiz was like, yo, I'm managing you, that's it. You know what I'm saying? So he started managing me, he started putting me in shows, putting me in the studio three days a week. Mm. Fresh out of freaking grammar school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, not grammar school, high school. Going to the studio right after school, heavy. Yeah. And um, just started taking it serious from there. And, uh, you know, once Screw came home from doing his stretch, the uh, Black Royal record label was started around what we were doing at yeah. the time. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, yo, I want to leave it just like it is, but we're going to put the Black Royal stamp on it. You know what I'm saying? So we all signed our contracts in Ringside. And then from there, it was like, all right. And then he would do everything as a group. Yeah. If it was a photo shoot, everybody's doing their photo shoot. Yep. Our press kits, everybody's doing their press kit. We did it everything at the on the same <laughs> like everything on the same time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's the way he ran shit. Like it was crazy. And uh, that's why Block Royal took off the way it did. Like yeah, it, you saw the Mary. It man. was an army. It started. It started going. It started going crazy. But but mind you, it went viral when I was down prison. I okay, didn't. So you I left just, when it was just a, wow. a handful of people. Yeah. Now when I come home four and a half years later, the shit's in Ecuador and Peru and Mexico, Cali, fucking Africa, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> is people Word. just like editing pictures? And but now I'm looking at these pictures and they're like making murals in their hood around somebody that I called my brother. Like yeah. they, they, they're following a they're following a legacy that my brother left. It, it was just crazy to see. You know what I'm saying? So so before you went up top. Did you release anything? Was there any I, like I was a able project? to, you know, before as as I was fighting my case, Screw came to visit me like probably two months before he passed away. Okay. And uh he was like, yo, I need you out here for like a year. He was like Akon's was Akon's situation was just taking off. 
and um, he was Akon's road manager at the time. You know, so when Locked Up was taken off, Akon was like, all right, start your situation, you know what I'm saying, and bring your first artist on board. I was the first artist that was going to be on board. Mm -hmm. So he was like, yo, I need you out here for like a year. I could get you a, 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 a distribution deal with Universal. Yo. Wow. Because yeah. Akon, they was going to do whatever Akon said at the time because he was popping. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And Platinum then isn't Platinum now. Nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> platinum right. then, yeah. you doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I couldn't. He talked to my lawyer. The lawyer was like, yo, the best I could do is six months. I already knew what I was facing. So I was like, yo, you got to just leave me here. You know what I mean? Let me do my time. I don't want to break it up by leaving. And, you know, they could only do six months. What yeah. can we get done? You know what I'm saying? So he was like, all right, bet. And then too late, Fuck, two months later, gotta, he passed away. That's so, got to be a long stretch to do inside yeah, when you know that shit was so just you, about to take off. So you right went there. around when the whole Akon stuff, like when, when Screw got together with Akon? Yeah, yeah. I was there. We was there. Like, you know, we helped him push that, that Locked Up song. We was there at every show. We was on tour with him. We Boston, you know, we was in Massachusetts, Connecticut. We was everywhere. We was... You know, we was helping that, and and then our hood. You know what I'm saying? That's that's part of his story. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like he can't deny that. Like he came from my hood, and you know, all all due respect to him because he did a lot for his people. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So there's no way I can even say nothing wrong about the man. Um, you know, when I came home, he was humble with me. Yo, you know, you need anything? Let me know. You know what I'm saying? I I just wanted a song. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was like, give me a song. Yeah. So my man Two Tone, you know, set it up and I was able to, you know, rock on something that he already had recorded. He was like, yo, take it. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, that dope. That's I did up. it. I knocked my verse out. You know what I'm saying? And um, we was just, you know, trying to bubble up again from there. And then, you know, a lot of sideways shit started happening with the Black Royal situation. And that's where I had to jump ship and uh, do my own thing. You know what I'm saying? Like. I can't wait for other people to do yeah. and have the vision that that screw had, you know what I'm saying? So now when this everybody, yeah. when the whole situation, the unfortunate, you know, situation that happened with Screw, were you you was already locked up at this time when this yeah. happened? Actually I, I had I was on my like first year when he got when he got killed. Wow. So like like <laughs> I would say like two and a half years I was done. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I wasn't getting no visits. I let my hair grow long as hell. Yeah, it was I just a bad time. I, I, I just cut my lights out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, fuck the outside world. No I music, even... he wasn't. <laughs> uh, yo, I, I promise you, like I I was doing the, the freestyle battles and I was writing my little 32 ball battle rhymes. Yeah. You know, because you gotta rep your city when you're in there. If yeah. you're a rapper, they know you're a rapper. I go to the yard, you know what I mean? You're gonna rep Dirty City, everybody, Camden, different different counties, different hoods. Yeah. So, you know, I was old, I was always the one holding it down for Dirty City, you know what, what? I'm saying? <laughs> Word, I, I was ringing up. crazy bells, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even to this day, like, my man's beat down state, like, yo, they keep asking if you, you know, Fury. Because yeah, yeah. I was down there doing that, like. And now, so, all right, so everything goes down, you come back home. How is that when you get home? Is there, like, now, are you saying to yourself, I'm going to create? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yo, I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I ain't going to front. Like, I recorded, I got home, I recorded, like, maybe six songs in, in, like, in like maybe two days. Okay. And, um, you know, listening to them now, it's on my it's on my Spitfire album. Okay. And it's like, I wasn't all there yet. But I, in my mind, I'm ready. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, in my yeah, mind, yeah. I'm like, yo, let's go. I got my shit ready. That I've been, passion, you know, hunger. And I was just writing like the last two months of my bid because everything else was just dealing with my situation and making the best of it, you know. Yeah. You can't really like write rhymes to the to the radio because, you know, you, ain't you exactly need the beat. You yeah. need the beat, you know what I'm saying? So whatever. But, you know, everything, everything started looking good. You know what I'm saying? I had everybody. I had the whole hood on board going to all my shows, you know, things like that. And then, um, you know, like I said, people have different views for what Black Royal was supposed to be. Okay. And, you know, that's where I was like, you know what? All love, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to still rep the hood. I'm going to still do me. But I got to do me over here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And so your first project was not on um, Black Royal? My, yeah, yeah. My, my first project was with Black Royal. It was, you know, Black Royal Presents. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. And then... um. <clears throat> 
I did my own thing after that, and then I, my next project, City of Innovators, that's okay. when I got with Hen City and AO. Shout out to the Innovators. Innovators, um, yeah. And we did a whole project, and with them, like, it was a great experience because this was, you know, a AO and Hen City, like, they went half with me on every session, the photo shoots, you know, the, the, the album copies, everything. We went half straight down the middle through every session mastering everything now they produced every every track on they the produced journey? the whole thing yeah. okay, you know what i'm saying dope. and we we <clears throat> we was fortunate to get joel ortiz to you know do the intro for that for mm -hmm. that um album it was dope it was a, it was a dope experience and um and then that brings us to loose screws loose screws is like now okay so from that city of innovators how mm -hmm. long after that did you two guys link up we had I think when I dropped City of Innovators he was like 12 I'm 13 sick. yeah no, I'm sorry <laughs> right? yeah. okay. when he when he had dropped it that's when I started hearing about that piff and all that so he had he had it on that piff and SoundCloud and I'm starting like this is when I'm starting to like come up okay like me starting out and so he like we kept it cool like through Facebook cuz I had added him on Facebook and yeah. so I was just following like he was dropping he was dropping like the, the songs on SoundCloud first before I even found out that pit. So he was oh, dropping right. he was dropping the song off of City of Innovators every week. Mm. So I was keep going to the you know like to the page like yo when he's gonna drop it and so yeah. then and so you then see the was, marketing skills, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So you was a fan of his before you even got yeah, be, to be, involved. Yeah. Ba basically like that's basically how it is. Okay, like, that's what's a up. fan first and then like I, I I don't care what anybody gotta say. Like I was really a fan of his music, like how I am with Jada Kiss and all these. Like yeah. Yeah. I looked up I looked up to to Fury because his music don't say was looked in the past tense because you still you know oh. you, still <laughs> <laughs> word, and you still seek my guidance, you know what I'm saying? So now so you guys so you two you guys link up. You remember the first beat he gave you? Yeah, it was a uh, trap house, man. And and and, and the crazy thing oh, that word. was my first yeah. like song that I produced that was out there. That was wow. that was my first he gave produced him that song. Exposure, man. He 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 gave me the he he threw me the pitch. You know what I'm saying? And it was a dope hood, you know, a dope hood song. Yeah. The video got me into a lot of trouble with the police. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was getting harassed like crazy. What? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I had uh, I had fiends in there, like, and doing what appeared to be drugs in the video. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And it was a lot of like uh, acting going on. Okay. So it so looked it looked a certain way. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. It looked a certain way, and the police was on me. You know, every time they would come across me, they'd be like, "Hey, Fury, nice video." When's oh, the next wow. one? You know what I'm saying? That's like he crazy. just throw a little indirect, <laughs> and yeah. it got to a point where I, you know I got pulled over two times in one day. You know, one time with my kids. Oh, and, you was yeah. a target. Yeah, yes. you know what I'm saying. Wow. So it was like one thing. Let's gotta, get it straight. It's a Jersey City thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And um, the Black two, Royal thing too. You Black know? Royal, and not for nothing, being the fact that they saw that. God knows if they try to track him back from back in the days, probably found out he did a bit and all that stuff. So yeah. they started putting all that together and they together, started seeing yeah. like, okay, this is yeah. where it's going. Now, you know? when Trap House was released, how old were you at this time? I'm a, I'm gonna say 16, like six, 16. 16. Wow, and you already had a, a single in the hood. And he's in the video. <laughs> and he's in the video. And he made, and he made the video. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that, that's motivating Cop, right cops, there. Cops didn't go after you? Oh. Uh, that that nah. that, I mean, like, because no like cops, I said, so don't stutter. You ain't no cops go after. Nah, nah, they, they, didn't come, they didn't come after after me because I live. I, I don't live in Jersey City. I live in. Nah, they was they was definitely like pulling cars over that that was coming out of my house. Yeah, because he because oh, wow. I'm saying because like pop, I, his pops had got into you know, but thank God he walked out of that one clean. You know what I'm saying? But it was just it was multiple people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like yo, this house is hot. I done burnt this shit down already. What, what, goat, what you know streets what you would say are those? By Late what? law. Um, yeah. Well, the Baldwin, my like my hoods, uh, quote unquote territory would be from the state highway up to like uh, Prospect, Baldwin Avenue, that whole stretch. You know what I'm saying? That shit was hot as hell, right? It was a. It, like was, it was hot back It was day. a dope era, man. Like I, <laughs> I swear, I'm, that's why I keep say I keep I keep like emphasizing that like I I came up in such a dope era where. You didn't have social media to boost your ego. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? You had to go out there and really have a good time and go find yourself something to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it was, and the females was looking for attention in a different way and not having a, you yeah. know, versus now that they post and have naked pictures. You, they was going out in the streets wearing some nice, you know, and you, and you could holler and get a number. Yeah, you know what I'm true, saying? It's true. like now this bitch is getting enough attention that they mm-hmm. feel their head is so high up in the air. It's like That's it's crazy. Period. Yeah. Now, and it's starting young. You speaking this truth, brother? It's how a fact, old? How, how old are you? I'm 33. You're 33. So yeah. you on the third floor? <laughs> yeah, you on yeah, the third? third you you on the third floor? <laughs> third so floor. I'm gonna ask you this question, and you can answer, but. You all young and shit. I mean, but all right. So, all right. (laughs) All right, I'm going to ask you this question. And, you know, from your personal view, do you feel that there's a disconnect with our era and the new era coming up in hip hop? I want to say, I want to say the disconnect comes from the the ignorance that they have towards our era you know what i'm saying okay that's where the disconnect is because for the most part they make you know the new era they make all right songs like uh it's 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 crazy that i like it but the the 21 side one two three yeah four. yeah Bank i account. fuck with it i like the beat it's, yeah, it's yeah. A simple you know i fuck with the song right. but the disconnect comes from that like the ignorance towards what we you know what I were ever built, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't don't just sit there and say, yo, we the, we the new shit, you know, fuck y'all niggas, you know. That's now I'm gonna be the voice to you know the other side. Voice of reason. Yeah, I'm gonna mm. the, reason you why, think- the reason why he's saying this is cause his favorite rapper is little Uzi. He says this every episode. <laughs> he says this every Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was a little Uzi. But listen, if do you think that that disconnect happens because our era was so fast to push this new era away and say that's not real nah you know what you know it started it started with hip hop it started with New York hip hop being mad at the south that's where it started yeah with the little Waynes and the Nellies and the and the fucking T.I.s and they were mad at them first Mm -hmm. and these are lyricists these are artists yeah you know what I'm saying and New York was mad at them because they was taking a spotlight. And then it turned into, you know, the the old heads being mad at the new generation. You know, it's just always something to to, you know, be mad at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like I wouldn't I wouldn't really judge, you know what I'm saying? Like if you make good music and the people are listening to it, then that's on them. Yeah. It, exactly. it doesn't mean I gotta listen to it. You okay, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I could just tune it out. Yeah. Now how do I, you feel about that? Like, <laughs> like because you did, because you did you. So, like, like, do you feel like the you know the older heads from our era? Like, you like, know, do you feel any disconnect with what's going on right now? I feel like I feel like there is because at one point they were the they were the new the new kids on the scene. So yeah. people before them they were looking at them like yo like this is not real. Like yeah. you had you had. That's true. Like you had slick Yo, Biggie, like Biggie you had- said it best. Ain't no guarantee they're going to love you next year. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? It's true. Now, okay, so that lead me to this question. Because you on the third floor, just like famine, just like Yo, myself. Yo, is other people on the third floor? Yeah, I, I mean, we got a room full of third floors. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. It's furnished rooms. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of rooms up there. Uh, so, um, Share a bathroom. On, do you feel in hip-hop there's an age limit? To make no, it. I, I could say there's a what as an artist or as a fan. As a as an artist to make it into the industry or you know to make it to what you feel and what you deem successful. Yo, it's so hard to say with the social media era now. You know what I'm saying? It's like they they'll they'll catapult who they choose to be the star of that era. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. it don't matter who you are. Yeah. What you could be you ugly. Be? You could be fat. You could be. You could have <laughs> one leg. It don't matter. Yeah. Whoever the people choose. And that's what it's gonna be You know what I'm saying Some people yeah, It's like, much easier now To just Become an overnight success you know Yeah that's true Yeah and I feel I feel like What he's saying is true Cause you, I don't know Like that that girl That did the The catch me outside shit like, Yeah Like out of nowhere She started rapping And, and everybody's like They're following suit With Cardi B With the yeah. Cardi B thing They're yeah. following suit That's all That's what Everybody's doing it Yeah everybody's so doing it. Like 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 we're young Like 
I feel like in order for, because I've been seeing this growing up, like, Young M.A., she came up, like, everybody, her hype was off of the, um, I think it was a, a Chicago song. It was like. Oh, that drill shit. The, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it was yeah, a drill. Yeah. It was the Chirac. Chirac. Yeah, 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 the freestyle yeah. joint. Yeah, it, it was that. And, and, like, I feel like those artists, they get famous if they do a nice freestyle. Like, because a lot of people were doing it, but I feel like her. Dave, Dave East did a, um, a Chirac freestyle and he and he bodied it. And that, yeah. That's the first time I ever heard of Dave East. Yeah. And then, and then I liked what he came out with. And then I typed in, you know, Dave East and. Like it, it all goes based off of what people like too. Now, like, what what's going on now? Well, you know this new era and what's going on I, now with the youth. Do you guys feel individually that you have to compromise your sound to fit in with what's going on right now? Honestly, on my on my standpoint, because I'm you're a producer, yeah. yeah so like, do on, you feel- on my standpoint, because I I was doing like the like the Jada Kiss type beats, yeah, and so a lot of people like. There's no, like, there's no market. For there's that. no like, demand like, for like, it. Like, like, there's not a demand for it. Like how it how it was back then. Yeah. But it's demand for like catchy a catchy song because you coming out with, like, the mumble rap era. It's like you don't have to be a dope lyricist. Yeah. As long as you got a catchy hook, you could spit bullshit through a whole sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I mean, yeah. And, and I mean, honestly, and honestly, I feel way. I feel like, it's like a lot of like. Drugs play a part of it too. Yeah, it's drugs definitely. play a part of it too. Like you got all these kids on lean, and they listen to like, to like Triple Red, XX, and and Tacion. Like those, yeah, yeah, like those type of people, and and it, it just sounds like like junkie music, and I don't I don't like it. So so do you feel in order to expand your reach, do you feel like you have to cater? Yeah, to, you, to that you, sound though? You, de- you definitely have to because if you don't if you don't cater, like I feel like like if you're not catering to these young generations, then they're gonna they're gonna push you to the side and they're not gonna be like, yo, this That's yeah. all that's gonna be. You're not gonna be relevant. So but now that, now that, as in the artist standpoint, because production, you can a sound you could get a sound out. Yeah. You could get a vibe out. Yeah. But as a lyricist, and it doesn't matter about the age either. Yeah, as yeah, a, it don't. it's harder. It's harder right now for a real artist to do anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's but do you feel you like you have to compromise? You gotta, you gotta dumb it down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and and you could hear a lot of, you know, you could hear that a lot today. You know what I'm saying? And, and not that you have to compromise who you are, but sometimes if you want to get to where you're going, yeah. you're gonna have to relate to a certain, you know, you gotta make your song, your songs more marketable. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And yeah. not cater just just to one demographic, you know what I mean? You got to be able to just reach people. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's facts. Now, I'm going to ask you both a question. And from your standpoint, from a producer and an artist, mm. what do you feel is success to Fury? As an artist, what do like what moment will happen to you and you say, I made it? When the music I when the music I make motivates people, you know what I'm saying. And so it, numbers it don't like, count. Nothing. Numbers don't. Well, I could say that now because I'm I'm not there. You know, I didn't get to where I needed to be. So I could just say numbers don't count when they really do. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But as an artist and for the for the love of it, nah, I don't because just to hear things like that, like you got somebody that's looking up to you that you don't even know. You know yeah, what I'm exactly. And that your music is impacting people that you don't know. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And, and I feel like that's 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 the success in it. You know what I'm saying? The message that people take from it yeah. and the impression that it leaves on them. You know what I'm saying? Word, that's what's up. And what about you? What's success to GP beat bangers? Like what <laughs> what would be success for you? That like you say, Mama, I made it. Honestly, like like he said, motivating people because this like 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 I said, I started because I was like a social exile. Like kids weren't kids were like People would look at me like in, in middle school and high school. They'd be like, "Oh, this kid," you know, because of the eye, my eye situation is very noticeable. Yeah. So I wasn't getting like, you know, I was one of those kids that that would sit by themselves, not talk to a lot of people, because I was scared to talk. I was yeah. scared to talk to a lot of people, because the first thing people would attack and bring me down was my eye. Yeah. So what I feel like when I made it is like somebody like me motivating them to like do do music, because. Music is a voice for everybody. Word. And Facts, man. Mu- music is a voice for everybody. Like Real producers, shit. we don't have a voice, like vocal wise, but you hear it 
and the type of melodies we use, the samples. Yeah, right. Like, like you could have you could have your your dark your, like that's when you're feeling angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you, yeah. Know, you get you get the artists that make they love songs when they in love, and you get you get like. Yeah. It like, depends on the vibe and it, shit. It all depends the vibe, but. One thing I want to I want to ask you because what was it the, the the situation you had with your eye? What is it called? It, um, I had a failed cornea. So I, is that the same thing like Fetty Wap? Um, Fetty, I think because I watched the interview with Fetty Wap and he had um a uh, glycoma. Glycoma. Gly, glycoma. That's what that's what he said oh, okay, in one of yeah. the interviews. So that yeah, that's different. Now, yeah. <laughs> now, but but as far as like. Vision wise, we're both blind from like when I and and I could say that he motivated. Yeah, like, that's what he I wanted mo- to ask you. Like when you saw him, that he didn't care what people will say, that he had his eye like that. Did that open you? Yeah, your eyes open? honestly, that gave me a little more more of, of like confidence, Word. and to be and to be who I am. Because when mm-hmm. when I was in school, I hated I hated the way my eye looked. Cause you know. Like growing up, kids are harsh. Yeah, kids yeah. are harsh. Yeah, word. Especially now with the social media, forget Shit. about it. Yeah, yeah. no go. And so yeah, you they, found they, your escape, and you found your voice through music. Yeah, I found I found it, and and I like like I said, I, I could thank my Godfather for that too. Word, shout out to Godfather, What's his, man. His, his Juan, yo, Juan. Yeah. yeah, um, his producing name he goes by by B Street, but he he don't put stuff out like that. Like, oh, okay. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. So. I gotta ask this question. New Fury album, Loose Screws. Yes, sir. Is out right now. That piff. That piff. How many? Search how many? Screws. How many joints you got with Auto Tune on? I just gotta know. Like, zero. Zero. Z- zero. Man. You don't got no Auto Tune on. No, I don't do. I don't do Auto Tune, <laughs> man. <laughs> do bars, bars. That now, word. Now, bars, now before man. you put this, you had like a little pause that you didn't. You weren't making music at the moment. right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, sometimes. I get uninspired, you know, just by, uh, just, I don't know, I just get bored with shit easy, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, plus, I, I, I can't, yeah, it's just life. I got kids and, you know, I work and I, I'm not in no way trying to portray that I'm out here doing it and getting all these bags of money. Like, I'm out, I'm out there punching in 7 30 in the morning every day and I'm working and I'm supporting my family like that. Word. You know what I'm saying? So, what, what, what we'll give you that spark to say, you know what, I think... Yo, it's that for a while, this is like a collection of, of music that I made probably over like two years. Oh, so it's not something you just yeah, went to the lab like, and started making it. Honestly, it's that I never really pushed it like that because I'm like, yo, this is going to be all part of it. Because I wanted to like have 13 bangers. like Okay. Something that you could listen to from top to bottom. I didn't want to put some mediocre... Like, I mean, maybe some people won't love every track, but... I guarantee you, you gonna when you're done with this and the CD's done, you're gonna be like, "Yo, this is a solid project." You know what I'm saying? Now this is available. This is available. Free. I don't want. I ain't trying to charge nobody nothing. Just listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Free where? Where? Where can they listen to it? It's on datpiff.com. You can search Fury Loose Screws. Word. You know what I'm saying? And it's a dope project. And and you know if you love it, share it. You know what I'm saying? Let your people hear it. You know what I mean? Now the the title, because that is powerful, especially the the history you have. Behind where with school and the Black Royal, yeah. Where, where I, I mean, I know definitely where it, it comes from, but what gave you the idea to call it like that? Um, in the beginning, it was a shout out to my sister Heidi because she she uh she um recommended the name because I was I was thinking of screws loose, but the <laughs> reason I named it that was because uh you know like right now like there's people that was taking over block royal that was you know that didn't have the same interests as me or you know things like that like uh you know a bunch of people that wanted to play a position that it wasn't made for them yeah. per se you know what i'm saying and you know no disrespect but that's and and just a, a bunch of people trying to be who they're not that's what i mean by a bunch of loose screws a bunch of screws running loose and instead of being where they're supposed to be to hold up this structure they running around and trying to, you know, be their yeah. own, you know, and it was, that's not what it was built for, you know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, the Baldwin Street sign is kind of crooked and it's falling off because it's missing screws. Yeah. And it's missing, it's you know, like, so. And it's also, you could, it's like a metaphor, like, right. it's missing screw. Yeah, yeah. It's missing, yeah, it's, and screw, rest in peace, that, you know, that's, that's what it has a lot to do with, so. 
I, I, th- I put a lot of emphasis into this and it was like, uh, you know, it made a lot of people think. As soon as I dropped the artwork, the shit, everybody started sharing it. It started going crazy. They're like, yo, when, where can I listen to this shit at? <laughs> I'm like, chill, easy on them. Yeah. Because <laughs> easy. it's like the, the, the song that really um, talks about everything is, uh, is number eight, Steel Bars. And okay. Steel Bars tells the whole story, just, you know, how why the album is called the, what it's called, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just me voicing the way I feel. Not shitting on nobody because I love everybody that I came with, you know what I'm saying? I love everybody that I came up with. We, we went through a lot of things and priceless memories, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. can't buy what we've been through, you know what I'm saying? So... It's not, it's not so much me shitting on him, but telling him, yo, salute, you know what I'm saying? But this is how I'm going to do me, you know what I'm saying? I'm still nice. The talent's there, yeah. you know what I'm saying? My talent always been there. I just needed an ear. I just needed somebody to be like, yo, Fury, let's go, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, you know, it just, <laughs> things happen the way they do, you know what I'm saying? But I'm always be me, and I'm always be on board. Like, I got bars for days, so. Yeah. Now, when you, now, how many joints did you produce on this? I produced five, five. Five? Five. Five. Wow. Those are big numbers right there. Yeah, nah, he has even, we have even way more songs than yeah. that. You yeah. Know? yeah we got I more. just didn't put it on the, on the project because I want to put it on the album. Now, is there visuals for any of these songs? Coming soon? This? Nah, it's coming though. We, we, I'm telling you, 2018, we're going we gonna, to, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I just, I just feel that way about this project and I'm like, yeah, I want to give some visual and, and really push this on, on bigger platforms and yeah. this is a great start. I appreciate y'all having me, you know, so. Definitely. Because I know y'all doing y'all thing and y'all got y'all yeah. listeners, you know, so. That's a beautiful thing when you got people you know and your peers that that can offer you their platform to do things like this. So I appreciate y'all. Well, definitely. So, well, before we continue, let's take a quick break. DJ Kenny maneuver on the mix, season two, episode (laughs) thirty-seven. We got Fury and GP. We'll be right back. All right. We're back. Tony Central Podcast with Union City's own Famine and the Bronx own co-host Mello. You gotta tell me twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We back on the Tony Central Podcast, season uh-huh. two, episode 37. Yeah. And we still got Fury and GP what in up, the building. Yeah, they ain't leave yet. Now one question I wanted to ask GP, because you're super young. <laughs> Is there any like new artists out there that you like? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say like a little bit of little Uzi. You like little Uzi? A little bit. Um, it's okay because he likes it, so I have to. <laughs> yeah. You say you like it. A, a, little, to... a little bit of little Uzi. Um, I I like Davies' music because it's like. Like, um, I think Dave hip-hop. East is one of those that is just right in the middle. That he, yeah. could, you could, he's hip hop and then he and then, does yeah. trap too. Yeah. So it's like he's always yeah. a lot of people's favorite dude. Yeah, but like when it comes to like artists that are out right now, I'm gonna I'm like keep it real. I, 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 like, I like Uncle Murder. F- um, 50, 50 still comes around when, when whenever he likes. Yeah, I still I, um Casanova. Oh, all right. Casanova so you two jack time. in like the East Coast. Yeah. You st- you're still on the East the side. Boys. That's what's up. Yeah, cause like imagine Fifty and Casanova and Uncle Murder one room together. That's, That'd be a dope record. That's too much energy. That'd be a real dope record. Yeah, yeah who you listening to right now? Uh, '90s hip hop. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's. And, but who? All right. But how specifically, you feel, who you listen? How to? you feel about the new Wu album? Like every day, I just go off something else. Like I, I just feel like CNN tomorrow morning. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And I just drive to work off the CNN and come home off. The, and uh, you know, I just I just go into the classic albums. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't really dig yeah. the new music like that. How you How you feel about the new Wu Tang album that you dropped? Hey, it's a breath of fresh air, yo. I, I, I've heard, I heard the shit they did with Redman that, that was um, on 9-7, and I was like, yo, that's that's a good look. And it sounds yeah. like the the old woo, you know what I'm saying? Like, Redman sounds like Redman. He's always going to be, you know, and it's just, it's a dope thing, you know what I'm saying? Will it will it be received like they, they receive everybody else? No, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Because that's not what, that's not 
it's not popular demand. They're not looking for lyrics and yeah. old woo stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's all outdated. So. Mm. But yo, let me ask you a My question. Opinion. Hashtag. <laughs> if you could collab with any artist, dead or alive, budget, it ain't an issue, <laughs> right? Who would that artist be, and who would produce it, and what kind of track would it be? Wow. And the same question for you, but who would you produce the track for? Dead or alive. Dead or alive, and and who and what kind of track would you? I would, would like you want? to do a song, with Kiss, man. You know what I'm saying? Like you would do a song. It's, it's every. Uh, for me, I would. I would love to have a song, with Kiss, because I know he would go off. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And who would produce I, it? You can tell the truth, you know. Nah, um, <laughs> nah, nah, I mean, it's any producer too. Any yeah, producer, producer, yeah. <laughs> Shit. I, I say A rap. A rap. A rap. I do a kiss God, collab. That'd be a, a bar beat. fest. That shit look like a little Uzi. Yeah, right there. yeah. That's, <laughs> it. that's yeah, but the, I think that'd be dope. And yeah, who would you produce this all for? I, w- I would say because. Dead or alive, don't matter. Dead or alive. Like, and it doesn't have to be only hip hop. Like R&B singer, anybody. I, I would like. I would like for. I'm gonna say, a Dave East, um, Casanova, and then. I, I really don't listen to a lot of R&B, but um, damn, Janae Aiko because she has a nice voice. Oh, like, yeah. oh, that's hot. Janae Aiko. Damn, you just put Dave East Casanova with Janae that's, Aiko. That's too much energy, and then she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah. but then that's how I just think. Like, I think like if you get people with different sounds and different energies, it'll come yeah. out to a dope record. That's yeah, dope. dope. That's dope. That's dope. All right, so I'm gonna ask. Because you're a hip hop head, so I got right, a hip hop right. head in the building, right. and I got the youth in the building. I don't know if you're gonna really know what's going on too much, yeah. but I'm gonna ask anyway. Band from TV, who had the best verse on that track? Oh man, yo, champagne on the rocks, going to Fort Knox, last yo, oh, yo, you pun pun? That yeah. shit. Oh, I ain't playing. I'm truly the worst. Who be the first to get his whole body fully reversed? He killed that shit. Man. So it's so pun. So you, I agree. Yeah, you agree. I, I, I know. I know the song. But All right. Kiss, Kiss, <laughs> no, 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 no. Kiss also body. Yeah, his Kiss verse. went. And a lot of people gonna... have came up here and said nature. Yeah, nature. Nature, nature killed his shit too. That like, opening that, verse. That was like one of the best collabs, man. That, that shit. And right you know there, what's crazy? Man. That I seen an interview with Nori, and he said the way that record came together, it wasn't it wasn't supposed to be like that. Like niggas was just chilling in the studio and they just yeah. did verses. All right, but yo, let me ask you a question. Hashtag. Right. Who had the better verse on the what? Method Man or Biggie? Ah, that's hard. <laughs> nah, I want to say, I want to say, Met the Man was dope, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they like, ain't no right to not pick big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn, man. Gotta pick big, man. All right, so, all right. Now, you said you're from Brooklyn, so mm. we're going we gonna to get into some Hovey talk, some Jay-Z talk, Renegade. Who had the best verse on that? Eminem. Eminem. Eminem? Damn. I love, I love, I, I love how Jay, you know, held his own. Don't say, I'm not saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay no, got no, yeah. done in mm-hmm. because, but I just feel like Jay was trying too hard to keep up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, that was Damn. bad. That was, that was bad. No, I think Jay-Z, in Jay-Z's verses, he flawless. But you could tell he knows he's on a song with Eminem. Yeah, okay, you know what I'm saying? I see where that, I see where like he adjusted himself to to be at that, you know, at that level. I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. What about you? What you? What, what you, you think? I plead the fifth. I haven't heard that song yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> yo, please, man, yo. Yo, that's blasphemy, yo. Y'all got some donkey in the shit that y'all do. Yeah. <laughs> y'all, know, y'all don't do that. You haven't heard the Jay Z and Method Man. Not because I'm really not. I'm really not. A, yo, a, a fan. I'm, I don't. Renegade. Wait, wait, who no. you not a fan of? Yeah. Jay? I'm not. I'm not really like. I didn't like. Never been. I never been. A, I never mind. like. Like became accustomed to Jay Jay Z's music okay. or Eminem's music. I never oh, became yeah. accustomed to it. Just give me like two oh. weeks, bro. I yeah, yeah, you. yeah. Please. All right, all right. So <laughs> then, but then, then you gotta understand, yo. He was born in '97. I know. Yeah. I I mean, 
That's the I think Ban from TV I, probably came out that year. You, you were one when Ban for TV yeah. came out. <laughs> so that's why he I was, was like, try to follow if you could. Matter of fact, I think he was one when the Hard Knock Life came out. Yeah. So he he like. I mean, so yeah, that's why I'm like, you know what? If you can, you can. If you can't, I understand. You get the youth pass. All right, so yo, let me ask you a question. Hashtag. Who won the battle? Jay Z or Nas? Who had the better song? In Takeover life, or Ether? In life, Jay Z. No, but who had the better battle song to you? Yo, honestly, Ether, you know, I, it goes without saying, Ether was the game closer. But I think Jay did his thing, you know what I'm saying? The Takeover was dope. Yo, like, people really let that fly over their head, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. When he said, you know who, did you know what, did you know who? Let's keep that between me and you. Like, a lot of, that, that shit flew overhead, you know Yeah, what I'm exactly. But I knew exactly what he was talking about. But you, you know saying, saying Nas won, though. That's Nas won, Nas won with yeah, yeah. That's, that's known, that's known. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, I, that's I, like, it's known, but I don't feel that way. People yeah. got their views, but popular, the, popular Yeah, popular, vote. yeah, yeah, yeah. He did get the popular vote. Melo, I got a question for you. What happened? You were supposed hashtag. to say hashtag. No, but you said I got a question for you. That's, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who had the Remix. better verse, Biggie or Jay, on Brooklyn's Finest? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that that's crazy. Right <laughs> that's so. crazy, yo. <laughs> nah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think, nah, I uh, like Biggie shit. Yeah, yo. Biggie was. He said, "Pardon me, pass the safe before I blaze." Yo, he yeah, killed yeah, that yeah. shit. Hell nah, yeah. yeah, Biggie was way more like. You could tell Jay was still like. That was brand coming new. up. Yeah, he was. Jay, but Biggie, that was that was a good one. That was a good one. one. Yeah, yeah. But yo, let me ask you a question. Hashtag. Growing up as a kid, did you watch TV? Yeah, yeah. Whatever, I, ch- I, whatever channel I, 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 Yo, listen there's a, I, I was outside playing basketball and shit yeah, I didn't watch a lot that, of TV He said he, he went in for some time I'm pretty sure he was watching TV No, then. no, no But I'm uh, saying yeah, as a kid Spanish You know, one. younger <laughs> kid <laughs> Spanish TV black. As a younger, as a youth Growing up What was your TV show to watch? Wow, well, I had a lot I had a lot Yo, but um, I, one one show that I loved uh, was um, Def Comedy Jam, where you know um, the Russell, Russell Simmons, Simmons oh, Russell yeah, Simmons, yeah. original one, um, Uptown Comedy Club. A lot of people didn't know about that, but it was like they had segments where they crack on each other. It was like a wild and out, or oh, like roasting and Uptown shit. Uptown Comedy Club, that was a dope the, show. The first yeah. one you mentioned is was that the one that Kid Capri used to DJ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, that shit used yeah. to be popping. Def Comedy Jam, that shit was so dope, yo. That yo, that so opened dope. the doors a lot for for, for a lot of people. Yeah, yo, Chris but, uh, Tucker, that was Chris Tucker. <laughs> Chris Tucker started on Def Comedy wow. Jam. For you, <laughs> 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 he's gonna say, "No, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna say like, what's all right for you? What, what show what, what growing show, up? What, what show on Netflix? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Be like, yeah, loving hip hop, <laughs> loving hip hop. Right? What show growing up did you did you enjoy watching? I enjoy watching like, ridiculousness. <laughs> <laughs> Because like, I'm going to say Yo Mama Whenever you like that Oh I thought you th- Oh Yo Mama <laughs> No no yeah I remember that I remember that I just, no, no, I, no, no I thought he was saying Yo oh. Mama <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy hey, watching Yo Mama no, watch that, Your Mama <laughs> Your Mama's my favorite show <laughs> Nah but Yo the, I don't know But that show had potential I don't know why It didn't continue like that Reason, reason I like that show Is yeah. because I would watch it And then next day I used to Say the jokes to my friends and be like, "Yo, where you get this? Where you get yeah, that from? I like, got it off the TV, bro." But even when you were when you were in grammar school, I don't even think people used to say like your mama jokes. That already passed, right? That was done. Nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I was watching it. I was watching it. Nah, nah, that show was dope, but I don't, I don't know why it didn't continue because it, it was dope. Also, also, I don't know if you remember the, um that little basketball um TV show where it was all trampolines. No, man. No, you don't, you don't remember that? <laughs> no, I swear, I swear to God. <laughs> no, it was, I'm trying to think. I, I do Where's remember. Yeah, I do no, remember. It was, it, was on, it was on Spike. Spike TV? It was on Spike. Yeah. Is that the Chinese people? No, no, no. It was, oh, oh, American Gladiators? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. It was, yeah, I, I know it was. Slam Ball. Yeah. Slam Ball. Slam Ball. It was that one. There you go. 
There you go. Damn. I, I knew, I knew Thank I wasn't God bugging. we have the youth in the yeah, building. Man. I learned something new. <laughs> Slab. I, I knew I wasn't bugging. I saw all y'all faces. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's that third floor look. Like, what the fuck? Yo, all right, but yo, let me ask you a question. If Fury, you fit in any TV family, <laughs> what TV family you feel you fit perfect in? Damn, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. He <laughs> said he took a pull. Um, and he was like, damn, that's dope. <laughs> Yeah, cause that, there's so many dope <laughs> families to choose from right now. It's and mind fucking, you, at that time, and that yeah. we grew up, there was a lot of shows yeah. that oh, now yeah, you won't yeah. see. That I'm talking about married family with children, family. fucking family matters, family fresh matters. Say by the bell. I don't want to be in full house though. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just do that out there. <laughs> but um, damn, family, nah, not family matters. Um. Charles and Charles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Charles and Charles. Nah, I'll do, I'll do, uh, Boy I'll do, well. um, nah, fucking Al Bundy, um. Oh, Married with Children. Married with Children. Yeah. I'll, oh, I'll stick to sister, man. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, yeah. Kelly, Kelly, right? Take Kelly, Kelly down. Yo. Yeah, I told you, Kelly's a top, bro. Wait, yeah, hold I was up. big on Kelly, yo. Hold, hold up, Kelly. hold up. All right, but yo, let me ask you a question since That's you go right. into that <laughs> battle of the Kellys. Kelly Bundy or Kelly Kapowski? Mm. <laughs> Kelly Kapowski. <laughs> wait, wait, Kelly Kapowski in Hawaii? Yeah. Oh, that was grown. She, she was, was grown. She was hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was hot. She was hot. <laughs> nah, but um, nah, I wanna say yeah. I say I say Kelly Kapowski definitely. She was hot. All like, right, so Shannon Doherty, that was her name. Yeah, Kelly Kapowski like or Topanga from Boy Meets World. Topanga turned out, turned out good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who was the one? Kelly <laughs> Kelly Kapowski, Kelly Kapowski or Topanga from Boy Meets World. Topanga, I say Topanga. Topanga, right. Topanga, she was just. You know, she was she was a good girl. She was the one you get to, she could bring home to mom. <laughs> like, yo, mom, this is Topanga. This, this is my new girl. Now, GP, do you have any idea what we're talking yeah, no, about right now? <laughs> <laughs> what, no, what well, you should know Full House 2.0. Yeah, now, like the Netflix I never liked one. it. I'm never. I don't like. Full you, House. Even Stephanie, the way she looks now. Nah, nah I don't. Only, the only I could say like sitcom family show I liked was My Wife and Kids. I yeah. found I found that funny. Oh, that's a dope show. Yeah. Kids. That's yeah. where um Wayne. Martin. Martin. Oh, okay. Was funny. Oh, the, that chick. And, and Gina. Yeah, she's she's bad. Yeah, but other than that, growing up, I just watched cartoons. I ain't watch no family sitcoms, so I can't. What about cartoons? What was your favorite cartoon growing up? Shit. <laughs> 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 I had a lot. I had um I had. The Spongebob, I had to edit it in Eddie. He said Spongebob. Yo, <laughs> 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 man. Yo, stop that. Yo. Spongebob is on, like, right now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Growing up, I <laughs> love that it, shit. It was... The, well, he's growing up. That's what I'm about. Yeah, I mean, it. he's born in 97. <laughs> is, uh, all right, so... This is a question you both can answer. I'm pretty sure. Capital punishment or ready to die? Mm. I'm going to say ready to die. Shit. I'm going to say ready to die. You connected more nah, with ready man. to die. It was more. Yo, remember I said I was from Brooklyn? <laughs> <laughs> but pun, capital punishment, the game needed that, man. The game needed that. It was... It, for Latinos, the game needed that. So I got to stay with Capital Punishment. Okay. That was the Capital Punishment that was, that opened was, the doors that, for that Latinos, was, though. Oh, definitely. What? I Hell mean, Fat yeah, Joe was man. still... But Fat Joe was still... He was making no, noise Joe, at yeah, that time, was Fat Joe, but, but Big Pun got that Fat Joe got wouldn't that be Fat Joe now plan. without Pun. Yeah. Yeah. Big Pun was the first one to get a Platinum plaque. He would have been like a trutch, like an old school rapper that, you know, still gets shows, but not popping, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, Fun, man. 
So you go pun. And then pun bring him Remy Ma. And Remy Ma had a lot to do with his two like biggest hits. You know what I'm saying? Like, more. Lean back, lean that's back, and, and all and the way all up. Way up. That's true. Nobody really credits Pun for that for, for Remy. Remy, or give Remy Ma the credit mm -hmm. for being part of those two big records. Lean back and um, all the way up. That's true. Cause she pulled the ladies in. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yo, she did that shit in Summer Jam. She had that place lit, bro. You went to Summer Jam? The the one that they performed on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, that shit, she had it crazy. And that she had just came home, too, so... She had that place lit, bro. But, yo, let me ask you a question. Hashtag. Because you, you, you know, you grew up in the golden era, the 90s. Facts. You know how different it was in the bodega. <laughs> Mom Deuce gives you a dollar. Mm. What is Fury getting? What, what, what's your favorite candy? Now, ladies. Now, ladies, nah, I ain't gonna bro. front. I love. I, I, nah, I say nah, that ladies. without even hesitating, yeah, bro. I, like I used to kill now, but ladies. they used to fuck with my teeth, bro. I That's did it. That was the best. It was like storage for later. Like you know what I mean? Like an hour now later, you're like, bro. oh, I still got now later. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Stomach fucked up. You got two pack. That's ten now later. That Yo. you fucked up. What about ah. you? What's your favorite? Well, do they still sell candies now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta expensive. order it online. Okay, a winter fresh is like almost fifty cents now. Bro. He's like, well, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> what what we say is your favorite candy? Charleston shoes. That's yo, and that's a throwback yes, candy, bro. Which I'd be big to with, know that shit yeah, too. That's, Charleston shoes. <laughs> that's there with the um, that's the yellow pack. It looks like a peanut chew, yeah. but it's yellow. It is though. Uh. That's just hard. So I don't know if you're ready. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna start at the central spotlight. This yeah, is a segment yeah. we started happening in the second season, which we ask you questions and put you under the pressure, and you got to answer them. Um, answers can't just be yes or no. If you say yes or no, you have to s explain why. If it's a person, you know, if you like the person, don't like the person, or if you pick whoever you pick, you have to give us an explanation why. So you ready for the central spotlight? You ready? All right, let's go. Go ahead. All right, so <coughs> you leave out of here. And this is for both of y'all. You answer for it first and so on. <laughs> All right, you leave out of here. You get to your crib. At the front of your door, there's a bag. Inside that bag, there's a million dollars. You can only spend the money one way. You can only do one thing with the money. Or you're done. They trace <laughs> it and it's, it's over. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the million dollars? How you spend it? What do you mean? Like... <laughs> Let me get this right. <laughs> There's only one way to spend it. Yeah. But what's the way? No, no, no. no, 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 no. So how are you gonna spend it? That's up to you. You only yeah. could spend it one way. I could only spend it one way. Yeah. What would it be? Like that's you only could do one thing with it. So it's not like oh I'm gonna use you know some money for here, some money for that. You only could spend it one way. I, obviously making it grow. You gotta buy a business. Buy a big. Buy a big business. Buy a big it. business. And, keep a on, and keep on reinvesting, right? You, you said you can only spend money on that. What is was there, that? Is there any specific business? Um, I would have to talk to my financial advisor. <laughs> 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 I would have one of those too. <laughs> All right, what but would you do? What would you say? Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I, yeah, I'll probably, I see it. I wouldn't even tell my parents I got a million dollars. <laughs> and, and how would you spend that? What would you do? I'm a sneaker fanatic. Honestly. So you'll buy sneakers with a million dollars? You gonna build like, yourself I'm, somewhere I'm, to live I'm, with a million? Like, <laughs> build a sneaker house. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm gonna live. Yeah, I mean, if that's what he's gonna do, like, that's... Cause, cause I see it, like, I, I go to... But over the keys, I see a bag. I look inside. I won't. I won't go back in. Like I'll go get what I like. <laughs> <laughs> so you just spent a million dollars. Uh, All right, kicks. so that's it. 
No, because at the at the end, no bitches. At the same, no. At the yo, same, sneakers, yo, don't touch my. No, because at the same time, at the same touch time, you could also you could also sell your sneakers Absolutely. to get the money. To the money. Yeah, it's an investment. Like like with a million dollars, you could get the rare sneakers that cost like twenty five thousand. And then years later on, it becomes more rare. But where the value, are you the living? Is, where are you living? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, where you fit in a motherfucker? Your mom ain't having that shit. <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> uh, you get kicked out after like the tenth pair, nigga. Where the fuck? You better get your own shit. All right, all right. So, all right. So the next question, I will say, I ask this question in fury. If you could remake a classic. From these four records I'm gonna mention right now, which record would it be? Remake. Yeah, it's a it's a male featuring a female. So basically, remaking means taking the male out the record, and it, and you'll be replacing the male. All right. So the record will be Method Man and Mary J. Blige. All I need is you. Damn. Then you got Ghostface Killer mm. with Mary J. Blige. All I got is you. You have Damn. Nas with Laura Hill. If I rule the world. And the last one is Jay Z with Mary J. Blige can knock the hustle. Yeah, there's a lot of Mary J. Blige. Yo, there. I would say, I I I think I'll body um if I rule the world. Mm. So you. Why, why would you say that one? I don't. The, the four of them. It's it's more up tempo. I think, I think um what can knock the hustle is just a dope feel, yo. I think I think you just can't do nothing to that song, even though if I rule the world was like a groundbreaker too. But like I think. I think I could just body that, you know. I, you know, not to say it's gonna be better than, but I think yeah. I could rock with just Lauren's voice yeah. and just, I, hell yeah. Okay. Well, but I, do I, you I, do you know any of those songs? <laughs> I know, I know. If I rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough. I like put it like this. I like. I, I, I like ask you this question. I never asked this question. I'm, I'm not really too familiar with this, so you, you won't be wrong. If, if you could remake. Any other Jordan sneakers? Which one would you pick from the top numbers? The undefeated fours. I don't know what you're talking the, about. The, <laughs> what you know those? The, the, what color those? They're, they're, they're the um olive green with the orange laces. Mm. Killer, you got those? He's he's the person I go to to my sneakers. <laughs> not take. I think I. Uh, I'm not gonna. You know, so you I, remake those? Weird, there. I re, I remake those because those those are I think they only make like seventy two pairs of those. Yeah. And those are those are those are official. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those. All right. So you remake those. those. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, all right. So, <coughs> next question. If you could have any superpower. What would that superpower be? <laughs> and what would your superhero name be? Oh, damn. That's dope. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Now, nah, I would like to read minds. Read, read minds. Is that, is it, do we have a good there's, 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 It'll save me a lot of trouble just knowing you're a fucking douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just be like, I, 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 I'll check you out. I'll, I'll holler. You know what I'm saying? That is dope, yeah. I just know who, and females too. I'm like, oh, she wanna fuck that You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I got to go with her, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and what would your superhero name be? I don't know, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Mind fucker. <laughs> yeah, yo. GP, if you had a superpower, what would it be? I'm gonna say morphing. Like you could turn into any object. Ooh. Nice. I thought you were gonna be like some power nice. and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would be your superhero name? <laughs> I like that. More, more, more professional. Morphin. Morphin. <laughs> Morphine. Morphine. <laughs> Alright. Right. Okay. This is the last question. Um what you you watch wrestling, right? You ever watch wrestling yet? I stop, I stop. But you, you know about wrestling. Yeah. What about you, Phil? You ever watch wrestling growing up and all that stuff? 90s wrestling, yeah. Alright, right. cool. that's good. That's fine enough. That's good enough for that question I'm asking. And this, I want, you know, it's going to go to Fury first, 
and you know when I ask you then you you um then I ask you <clears throat> in wrestling there's two terms right there's one called the baby face and one called the heel the baby face is the good character and heel is the bad character right mm-hmm. if yeah. you if you could explain to the world who who you are a baby face or heel and if you know a WWE uh, res- wrestling character from back in the days to now that will describe you, who would it be? I say Ric Flair. Ric Flair ain't give a fuck about nobody. Ric Flair was just in his bubble like, this is me. And he go, woo! You know what I'm saying? He's sliding out. I love myself. Ric Flair, man. Self-confidence on a hundred. And he was taking okay. everybody's bitch in the WWE. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? What about you, GP? Oh, man, I'm going to say Jeff Hardy. Back Jeff Hardy? Huh? Yeah, because oh. everything's extreme to him. Yeah. And not, not, nothing's the limit. <laughs> and he always had that guitar. He, no, 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 Jeff no, Hardy. Jeff, the, oh, no, Jeff no, Hardy. Oh, I, for some reason, yeah. I thought Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Hardy. Jeff yeah, Hardy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. That's, That's dope, dope man. Yeah. All right, so now, because there's two people and, you know, I'm a, this is a part of the show, Extend the Invite, Surf the Clouds. This is where I'll, you know, you do what you love to do. Now, mm-hmm. it's up to you, entirely up to you. You a spitter, so I extend the invite, and you can or you cannot. If you want to, what do you, you mean? Want, if you want to rap right now. Oh, that's all right. Come on, man. Uh, oh, all right, all right. So, Melo, uh, I think that's it's just a '90s thing. Like, those, yeah, it yeah, comes yeah, natural. yeah, yeah. That's but you the know, the new kids now will be like, ah, uh, now nah, I'm gonna write and I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, no, something. All right, so I'll open it up. I'll I'll spit it like a light eight, and then you could jump in. All right, all right, all right. Look. Yo. <laughs> well, what happened? Nah, I gotta do you too. <laughs> yo, um, yo, cloudy nigga, surf my clouds, watch me levitate, elevate, scream and fuck the world while I penetrate. I know life's a bitch with iron lungs, so I meditate. Getting so high, I spray paint mellow on heaven's gates. If I offend you, die slow while I continue. You either the nigga eating or the nigga on the menu. Yep. I'm retired if you whack. I'm retired if you whack. I got some verses I can I can send you. Cause now I'm doing shows without a venue. Cloudy. Certified hustler, Remy in my double cup. Two of the hardest in the city, they can't fuck with us. Uh. Cut from another cloth, rappers is butter soft. But of course, I'm a monster, I'm killing them for the cause. You could play a Tupac in a jukebox. Since ready to die, trying to fit a new Glock in my tube socks. You dudes not fucking with Poppy, I'm on the upscale. Bird ass rappers with stories spitting them ducktails. It never fails, but I never ran, never will. Better chill before them boys run up on you with the steel. It's Mr. J. Dot, C. Dot, classic like a Reba. Shades on, poker face, all in, pre-flop This is what Jersey sounds like Wild nights, when we form like Voltron Reppin' the town right, facts uh. Whack verse, couldn't keep it on my conscience Step in the booth, forgive me father I'm a monster yeah. There he goes That's how you surf the clouds right there um, Sent your spotlight, got We definitely it. appreciate you guys coming through today Yeah this is Man, dope word, episode. Yeah, good time. looking out for that verse um, right thank there you, Thank you um, before you guys leave, can you please um, give your oh shit, my bad. your social media um, info? Yeah, franchise underscore fury seven twenty Instagram and uh, yeah, just follow me on Instagram. <coughs> Fuck my Twitter. What about you, GP? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, GP Beat Bangers with three underscores at the end. Yeah, just Damn, why you gotta make it so hard? <laughs> yeah, figure it out. Like, it's one, GP. then two, or two, then one. <laughs> now, one, one before the name. Before, before we let y'all go, um, Fury first, then you. Um, if you can give any words of encouragement, any words of motivation, somebody that may be looking at what you're doing and may be inspired. Yeah, um... Just n- never seek validation from nobody. You know what I'm saying? Always be confident about who you are and what your goals are. You know what I'm saying? No matter what uh, field of work you're in, just always be confident and be ready to progress. You know what I'm saying? What? What? What about you, GB? I'm going to say just be yourself because 
being being more original could go a long way than trying to be somebody that you know that look up to you because a lot of people I, I like originality more right. right originality could go a long way so like you said never seek validation always believe in your um yourself because the more you push yourself the more the more like the more out of you you didn't realize that you had in you comes out and it and it shows like your true your true char- characteristics right um, yeah so you guys know you guys got a a welcome anytime you guys want Word, we music, support everything y'all that. do man we any support everything Tony Central any new music you guys do, Tony Central, new music you guys do send it over we play it on the playlist yeah. um, Loose Screws is out right now yeah, that, yo, piff. that piff that piff yeah. and um <laughs> shout out to DJ Kenny Maneuver Nova. shout out to Efren Straight Fuego Studios Whoa. Shout out to everybody in the building. Cloudy. Yeah. Season 2, Cloudy. episode 37. Cloudy. And we'll see you next week. One. Right. One. Don't forget to subscribe to get all the new episodes first. Thank you. See you next time on the Tony Central Podcast.